Welcome to this demonstration of the single-phase grid-tied inverter. As for the other functions of the Home Energy Production Control Unit, be aware that this function has a high complexity level, and thus, basic knowledge about the Buck Boost Chopper and PWM Rectifier Inverter are recommended before using this function. Once the Chopper Inverter Control window is fully open, click here to select the function you want to use from the list. Here, the Single Phase Grid Tide Inverter. Note that a window may appear. Just do as it says or click OK for automatic configuration. Now go here under Function Settings to see all the features available for this function. Status indicates if the function is started or not. In the PWM Rectifier Inverter settings, we get Active Current Command, sets the desired Active Output Current, Reactive Current Command, sets the desired Reactive Output Current, Q2, Q5, Q3, Q6, the transistors used by the PWM Rectifier Inverter. You can choose for each one, PWM, or on or off for troubleshooting. Finally, settings for the DC bus. Our DC bus voltage command sets the value of the DC bus. Q1 and Q4, the transistors used by the buck boost chopper. Again, you can choose PWM, on or off, for each one. Here are the two knobs to control the active and reactive output current and the start-stop button to control the function. Meters C1 and C2 respectively track the duty cycle of the buck boost chopper and the DC bus voltage. Just hit the single or continuous refresh button here to see the results. Just above these meters, you get the electrical diagram of the function. Note that E3, E4, and I4 need to be connected exactly as shown for this function to work properly. If you need more help with the connection process, refer to the Show Connection button here for a complete connection diagram. Let's take a look at the electrical diagram. Three small electronic circuits can be found within this function. A buck boost chopper allows connection of a low DC voltage to a high DC voltage while keeping control on the power flow through the duty cycle. A PWM rectifier inverter, which is a DC to AC converter, allows the connection between the AC and DC networks while also keeping control over the power flow. And finally, a low pass filter that cuts out high frequencies and most harmonics created by the PWM rectifier inverter. The important fact about this function is that the user has control over the active and reactive current in both direction and amplitude, which allows charging the battery pack from the AC network or returning power to the AC network from the battery pack. Since this equipment is fully connected, let's start the function. On the scope here, the yellow curve is the output AC voltage, the blue curve is the output AC current, the purple curve is the output power, and finally, the red curve is the voltage of the battery pack. Let's first set the reactive current to zero. As you see, when I increase the active current, the output power increases, but is negative as shown on the scope. You can also see that the output current has a phase shift of 180 degrees with the output voltage here. By looking at the red curve's value, Notice that the voltage of the battery pack has increased. All this data means that we are currently charging the battery pack from the AC network. However, if I decrease the active current into a negative value, then it becomes in phase with the output voltage and the power becomes positive, which means that we are now returning power to the AC network from the battery pack, explaining why its voltage is now low. Let's do the same with the reactive current. First, I set the active current to zero, then I increase the reactive current. We observe that the output power increases in amplitude as the current clearly lags behind the voltage with an angle of 90 degrees. If we look at the value here, you can see that the average active power is zero. As expected, the actual circuit produces reactive power only using pure reactive current. If I decrease the reactive current to a negative value, you will see that the current now leads the output voltage by 90 degrees, and the average output power is still around zero. 
The control over both active and reactive current gives the user the opportunity to control the power flow in both amplitude and direction. It is a very interesting function, and you should try mixing the active current and reactive current at the same time to see what happens. That's it for the single-phase grid-tied inverter.